Hello engineers, welcome to the new video of the course and in this particular video we are going to simulate the circuit which we had designed in our previous session. So in the previous session, let me go to the blackboard. We had designed this particular circuit that means we had designed a buffer amplifier with the help of op-amp, right? So now we are going to simulate this particular circuit on the Proteus software. But before that, I will just I would, I would just like to explain you the connection. So you can clearly see I had connected the entire circuit in the same way. If you want, you can take the screenshot and then, then you can compare. So this is my source. This is my resistance or the source uh, source resistance RS, which is connected to the uh, non-inverting terminal. Then we are shorting the inverting terminal and then uh, we are shorting the inverting terminal and the output and uh, we are connect connecting one load resistor to the output. Okay. And we had kept VCC or we are connecting DC as I mean DC voltages as plus 5 volts and minus 5 volts. So we will just quickly see the connection. So you can clearly see uh, this is my inputs uh, or the source, right? So this is my source voltage. This is my source impedance that is 2.2k which I'm connecting to the non-inverting terminal. You can clearly see this is the non-inverting terminal and we are shorting the inverting terminal and the output of the op -amp. You can clearly check and then you know we are connecting one load to the uh, uh, we are connecting one load in between the output and the ground right and this is the uh, DC supply you can clearly check over here uh, so we are connecting plus 5 volts to uh, the uh, pin 7 and minus 5 volts to the pin 4 so just to show you that as well let me go to the pin diagram of op amp just a moment yeah you can clearly check over here let me erase if I can show it to you just a second let me erase this particular thing yeah and this as well so you can clearly uh, check over here already I had shown over here that I, I need to connect uh, this particular positive terminal of the battery one to the plus V that means to pin number seven and negative terminal of the second battery to the pin number four you can clearly check over here that is minus V right and pin two is your inverting and pin three is your non inverting input so you can clearly check pin three is my non inverting and pin two is my inverting terminal okay and I'll just uh, quickly just give you uh, an idea that why exactly I'm connecting it in this well like why exactly I'm not using one one DC supply that means minus 5 volts I will connect over here and the plus 5 volts of this particular DC supply I should connect over here why I'm doing it in this way because this IC741 it is made up of BJTs right and biasing BJTs is little tedious right so um, you know and the open that are designed now I mean that are made now it is made with the help of CMOS technology and you know CMOS technology so you know it's quite easy to bias the CMOS whereas it's quite difficult to bias uh, the BJDs and if you could remember I mean in the differential amplifier course I had given you a brief idea that why exactly we should connect a dual supply okay so that's the reason that why exactly we are connecting a, a dual supply uh, to this op-amp which is made up of BJTs right and generally if you see uh, you know the circuits or the opens which are designed with the help of CMOS we don't prefer to give you I mean give it uh, give uh, uh, dual supply connection we just provide a single supply that means we just connect a DC uh, so, uh, only one battery okay as you can clearly see over here we are connecting two different batteries right in this fashion and then we are taking uh, the common point which is being grounded okay so that's the overall idea okay I'm not going in that detail way because we are going to look upon this particular topic as well in the course of op-amp so I'm not explaining each and everything in depth I'm just keeping it quite simple okay so what I will do I'll just uh, run this particular circuit so just have a look over here channel a that is the yellow color signal it is my input then channel B this is my blue color signal so we are going to check if we are if we are able to get the same signal that means over here let me just write over here just a second uh, okay so over here we are providing over here we are providing one volt pick to pick signal right so we are going to check if I'm able to get one volt pick to pick signal over here or not and same one volt pick to pick signal if I'm able to get at the output side or not okay let me just write it erase it I'm not on the on my tablet I'm just um, trying to write it with the help of my mouse okay so that's why it is looking a little rubbish but please try to understand so basically with this particular uh, oscilloscope we are going to check that if like if whatever the signal that we are delivering or whatever the signal that the source is delivering if the same signal is getting reflected at the non-inverting terminal that is one volt pick to pick signal and this 
entire signal if it is reflect if it is reflected at the output terminal or at the output side of the op amp or not if we are getting same amount of signal that means our op amp is delivering 100% of the signal from the input side to the load side okay from the source side to the load side so this is what our agenda is so let me erase all of the thing and what we will do we'll simulate this particular circuit so let me simulate or let me run this particular circuit just a moment is i think it is taking a little time but yeah you can clearly check over here let me just show it to you this is 1 volt peak to peak signal uh, frequency i had kept as around 1 kilohertz if you want you can take uh, you can keep the frequency as around 100 hertz it's up to you so let me go over here yeah so i'll just uh, click on the cursor and i'll just click on the points so that it would be pretty easier for you to understand see this is 1 volt peak to peak signal so this yellow color signal is 1 volt peak to peak signal you can clearly check over here this is 1 volt peak to peak signal which is uh, you know present at the input side that means my source is delivering see this yellow color signal this source is delivering 1 volt peak to peak signal right let's come to the uh, let me just move it little above yeah yeah let's come to the uh, signal which is uh, which we are getting after the source impedance and you can clearly see uh, over here as well you can clearly see that means uh, you know after uh, this particular resistor that means after 2.2k as well we are getting the same amount of signal that is 1 volt peak to peak signal you can clearly check the blue channel or channel b i had connected to this particular end that means uh, between the uh, non inverting terminal of op amp and the, the resistor r1 that is 2.2k right so over here as well we are getting 1 volt peak to peak signal great now we should focus on the final output or the final signal that is this one and over here as well you can clearly check or you can clearly look we are getting 1 volt peak to peak signal so you can clearly look over here at the output terminal as well that means at channel c which we had connected to the output side of the op amp we are getting 1 volt peak to peak signal okay so that means what designing buffer amplifier with the with the help of op amp it is very very easy and the second advantage is that what the second advantage is that uh op amp delivers 100% of the signal that means uh, there is 0% loss in the signal which is coming from the source right so whatever the signal that is coming from the source the same signal is getting delivered at the output side or to the load side so that is the second advantage or these are the two advantage based on op amp or based on buffer amplifier uh, uh, you know which we are designing it with the help of op amp so that was the entire idea about the designing a buffer amplifier with the help of op amp and bjds and now i'm coming to the question that i know most of the students might uh, face difficulties uh, so let me go to that particular question that if designing a buffer amplifier with the help of op amp is very easy right so let me just write your question this uh, this is the question which is asked by most of the students just that uh, if designing op amp designing sorry designing buffer amplifier designing buffer amplifier designing buffer amplifier with the help of op amp with the help of op amp is easy right it is very very easy right very easy very easy then why why we are why we actually uh, invested a lot of time in understanding the designing designing of buffer amplifier designing of buffer amplifier with the help of transistor or with the help of bjts right with the help of transistors or with the help of bjts why we invested so so much of time and also this particular transistor has accuracy of around 90 percent whereas the accuracy provided by this particular op amp it is of 100 percent so why we invested this amount of time you know in understanding how to design a buffer amplifier with the help of transistor the reason is quite simple let's assume let's assume you are designing one ic or you are designing one chip okay uh, you are designing one ic integrated circuit you are designing one integrated circuit integrated integrated circuit or ic integrated circuit or ic obviously right so and let's suppose there are two system system one and system two and again we are facing the same problem that means whatever the signal that is coming from system one okay whatever the signal that is coming from system one let's assume that uh, 
if you are connecting it to system 2 so we are just getting around 40 percent of the signal at the system 2 that means around there is a loss of around 60 percent of the signal okay 60 percent of signal is being lost right so there is a loss of around 60 percent of the signal so to counter this particular issue what we do is that we actually design one buffer amplifier okay we actually design one buffer amplifier okay between system 1 and system 2 now you just focus over here that we we are designing this particular buffer amplifier obviously we need to design it with the help of transistor we cannot we cannot design it with the help of open why because this ic the size of this particular ic would be equivalent to the size of the open right the size of this particular ic it is equivalent to the size of the open so you cannot use open in that particular ic right so we require one component such that it will give around 90 percent of the accuracy so that whatever the signal that is present over here so it will deliver 90 percent of the signal to the system 2 and at the same time the size of this particular component the size should be very very less the size should be very less right the size should be very less so these are the two important aspects that we focus on so for this particular issue we always use buffer amplifier with the uh, i mean we always try to design a buffer amplifier with the help of transistor okay provided when we are dealing with integrated circuit or when we are trying to design a buffer a amplifier in ic okay in any ic it can be any ic okay okay you are designing uh, your, uh, uh, an ic for certain application and that particular ic requires one buffer amplifier okay when you are encountering this kind of situation so we cannot use opam there because opam will utilize lot of space or in fact opam is equivalent to the size of this particular ic right so that's the issue we may face so we at that time we designed the buffer amplifier with the help of the transistor and, and that's why we invested a lot of time de in designing a buffer amplifier with the help of transistor right so that was the reason behind it and i really hope that you understood each and everything each and every detail uh, you got you got each and every detail um, understanding of the things that we had covered throughout this particular course okay so this was all about the entire course if you enjoyed this particular course it's my request to you that please do read this particular course and secondly if you want to understand each and everything about the analog and the digital electronics not only that one some part of the embedded system although i had not made any course as of now about the embedded system but yeah in the upcoming uh, in the upcoming few days and in the upcoming few months i will be making courses on embedded systems analog electronics digital electronics and I will, I'm, I'm teaching all of the things practically. So if you want to understand each and everything in depth from right from what is current electricity, what is voltage and all from there to, um, you know, simulating circuits on Tinkercad software, on the Proteus software, on the Multism software and all, you make sure to visit the links given in the resources section. You make sure to enroll in all of my courses. I'm going from very basic to the advanced level. Okay. So I really hope that you are enjoying my sessions. You are enjoying my courses. If you are enjoying it, then please do rate me. Okay. So thank you for listening patiently. I'm ending this video over here. Thank you very much.